So, today we're talking about the lock ring. Um, I'm changing the fuel pump in the 2008 Toyota Corolla and I decided to make a video about just the tools that I was using to try to remove it. And there is so many different techniques that people are actually telling you what to do and what not to do and chair chisel and hammer and etc. They are pain in the butt. Okay, you will not get away. Well, you got a 50-50% chance. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say that again. There's a chance you actually try to make it turn and it's going to turn like that. Like butter. Super easy. And the other 50% chance is that it's going to be completely seized there. And it's going to be a pain in the ass for a few hours. And I don't want people to get injured. I already injured myself in the past in one of my shoulders. And it sucks. You cannot work for like three weeks. You're working at 20% capacity in one arm. It doesn't work. So I'll show you what I did. So the first thing I did, I have an old uh, universal lock ring remover. If I remember in the time, maybe a few years back, I paid like $60 for this. And as you can see, the, the notches are pretty large. And when you look over the Toyota, uh, it's really it's really really thin and on the Corolla itself you got those gears at the bottom so you don't have the full extension you just got a few maybe millimeters that you actually can grip so I tried it out and what happened is I notch away the corners because I don't have enough surface of contact so right there be careful because having the tool doesn't mean it's the perfect tool for the job you're trying to do and one of the big problem with the universal you see how high this is this is a problem because once it's installed you got that large gap and it's not in balance so when you're trying to force even with a breaker bar or an extension like i got there the whole thing is going to always try to move sideways. You have to put one hand here and at the same time with the other hand try to turn it from far away. It's not going to work. You're, you're working in a wrong way with that one. So that, not a good idea. Universals, try to evade them and I'll explain it why. Because that was $60. It's really wide. It's not really useful for any model. But you can buy on Amazon a OEM part it's nearly the same width so it goes as far and you see you got actually that little tab at the bottom that comes and make contact on top of your tank uh, that's a uh, 25156 OEM tool it will help but it doesn't mean the lock ring is gonna turn okay this do not solve every problem I know some people shows videos that they just put it on and they turn the ratchet and the whole thing turns. It's not always that easy. Okay, that sometimes I call BS on those kind of video, but maybe not. Maybe some people it just goes really easily. But at that point, you didn't really need the tool, right? Makes sense. If it turns easy, you didn't really need the tool. The a plank uh, piece of wood with an hammer will have done the same job. So. Yeah, so those models are a bit better, they're cheaper, and it's the OEM, as you see right there, and those got actually more surface contact to make it turn. And it's actually lower once it's installed, so you got less of that side swivel when you try to turn, and you can actually put a lot of pressure. So skip the universals go for the, the oem if you can always check your type of model because some of them doesn't have tabs etc so just be aware of that so what i'm saying it's more general but at least so one of the best way to do it often is the piece of wood you just actually put it on the side use your hammer hammer it down on that side but as you can see on mine i was trying and i was just chipping away the wood so it was two C's for it. And then you have to move to something more solid. The problem is 
do your steps, right? You start with the tool or you start with the, I would suggest starting always with the piece of wood because you don't damage the tabs and anything at all. So from there, either move to the tool or move up with a chisel or if you got a tool, something like this is a ball joint uh, remover or you can use a pry bar like this. And one of my favorite one is this. So what happened with this, with this model, it's really flat. And when I put it over it, let's say like this, I can put the notch over. So now I'm locked in place, right? It's the perfect width to get over the tab itself. And I can actually put it really flat. So now all my force that I'm applying with the hammer on that top is really, really straight. I'm not eating, hitting sideways because if you take a, a screwdriver or something else, let's take a, a screwdriver. Well, you're always a bit sideways, right? So you're not, you're maybe at the 35, 45 degree angle and that's not good. That's not what you want to do. You want to be as flat as possible and be able to apply that force so the whole ring turn. So those are not too costy, they're flat, and they will do the job. Like I'm telling you, you put the curve towards the bottom, you make sure it locks in place as flat as possible, and what I use, I use my hammer. So now, the warning, you're working over a gas tank, there's fume, it's not connected, you have to be careful, I got rags. So what I do, I wrap the whole head of the hammer with rags, at least two or three layers, then I start hitting. Do not make any sparks. For those that follows my channel knows that I love cigars. I'm always smoking cigars. I'm gonna die of it. But I'm not working with my cigars right now because I'm gonna freaking blow up if I do that. It's the same with a spark. You don't want to hit that piece of metal with your hammer just empty so keep your doors open keep it well ventilated use a rag around the head of your hammer like so and hammer it down and once in a while take a look because you're gonna destroy that piece of rag so for me the perfect tool to remove that type of lock ring that is a lock ring with the the ridge on the side is that flat bar okay that for me is the perfect tool but the first step would be to use a piece of of wood or maybe the spawning tool but if it doesn't turn that means you have no choice you have to go heavy hitting like i'm telling you 50 for 50 percent chance there's a chance it's not it's completely snug other time it's completely seized i saw some people that says oh, it's really easy you buy the tool you put it on and just turn it well good for you get a lottery ticket or something because it is rare right so you've been one of the lucky so that will help you out something that can help you can try to lube it up that's just rust check uh, sometime it helps some other times it doesn't help some other guys will say well lube it up then take the tool the uh, spawning tool right there the lock ring remover Put a lot of pressure on it and at the same time you put a lot of pressure you turn it well it could but that's in the first step right so that's a two-step job the first step is the lightweight work lightweight is piece of wood the tool itself to to remove the lock ring if that doesn't work then you land to the heavy work so the, the old lubing thing should be the first thing you do no matter what because you just want to make sure it's not seized so that's a given, right? That's, that's as soon as you talk about that job, put some lube. That's it. You, you want to do something else, put some lube, right? So I tried other techniques just for the fun of it. I wanted to record it. So I try with one of those traps. And for this model, the tank is actually inside the floor and the tank is not removed. So yeah that can help that could work if i can access it the the fact or the chance you can actually access it is not that high so yeah i wouldn't 
start doing the job and getting that tool before removing the whole thing. If your tank is on the floor, that's going to be hard. You have to sit on your tank and with this, at the same time, you have to try to pray it. That hammering, hammering the, the, with the flat bar will make a huge difference. But be wary of something. Whatever the technique you use, like you said, like you saw earlier, I broke the corner of the tabs. Where is the... I'm having a hard time to look at it right there. So you see, I broke a corner of the tab just with the, the tool itself. You will break parts of it. Be aware of that. If it doesn't turn right away, you're gonna break some parts. It is normal. That ring costs $50. You can buy another one if you have to. But go light. You'll start breaking stuff. And then when you break a corner, like we saw with that one, you still got that flat surface for this to turn. So that's why I say always start with the easy one. Try to turn it up. If it doesn't work, then move to the heavy hitting the technique. As you see, I chipped one completely off right there, chipped another one completely off there. And after a while, it started turning. I'm not sure if it's... Is it still loose? Let's try to... Yeah, I guess I would need to hit it to turn it. But anyways, so right now, usually that pin that is right there is usually in line with that. So just to show or prove that this turn, I don't want to hit with an aimer. So what I'll do, I'll just cut off the video and come back to show you that it turned. So just remember the notch right there is in line with this. So what else? What I tried, just to show you how stuck it is. Let's say I use this over the top, right? I got this installed. Trying with my ratchet. Do I have a ratchet around here? Ratchet, ratchet. Ratchet. Watch out. Anyways, let's say you got your ratchet over the top and you're trying to turn it. That wasn't working for me. So what I did, I took a breaker bar with a five feet long pipe that I use an extension and I was actually outside of the car turning the pipe while somebody else was on top of it. And guess what? It broke down because the force wasn't distributed well enough. That means the surface contact right there wasn't good enough and I was only chipping the corners. So your force is not well distributed for that type of model. So I come back to that one. It took me, I think, I would say like 10 good hit from that, that, that corner over here. And I use, actually, not the small aimer, I use my heavy one. So I hope that's going to help you out, guys. So what I'll do, I'll just uh, make it turn a bit, show you what it looks like. But like I'm telling you, they're not easy to work with. If you check a video on how to remove lock rings, some of them will say, oh, well, I tried this and I used the plank and the plank was the perfect tool. The other one's going to say, well, that, there, there is actually one video that kind of pissed me off. Uh, the guy is like, oh, to remove a lock ring. And he put the lock ring over it, uh, the, the tool to remove the lock ring. And as soon as it starts turning, there is that little silly music that kicks in. You know how much pissed off I was the first time I tried to remove a lock ring? How insulting that was to see that guy showing, well, if you got money and you can buy the tool, this is going to turn. You're stupid. No, you're not stupid. It is a tricky part. Don't fall for that kind of BS videos. They can be easy or hard. You will have to apply a lot of force if it's hard. And it's normal. It's scary because you're scared to break it. You're going to break a few tabs. It is normal. Do not fall for that kind of behavior or that kind of video that try to make everything perfect. It's not perfect. It's a bad engineering. It happens. That's how cars work. We, we got some really good stuff and other stuff sucks. Having this, the, the gas tank just under the, the seat of the rear passenger is amazing. Perfect job. Lock ring, completely stupid. 
didn't work. <laughs> that, that sees up. So anyways, so what I'll do, I'll cut off that video. I'll turn it just to show you guys how I do it. Maybe I'll, I actually, uh, somebody sent me in my PO box a, a small stand to put a phone on it. So maybe what I'll do, I'll just put the, I'll try it out. I'll put the phone on it and I'll try to turn it. So yeah, okay, be right back and I'll show you how I turn it. Go. So what I'll do, first thing I'll do is actually take the hammer, cover it with a rag. And I'll find a tab that's not too broken, let's say this one, and I just slide it in place, just like this. And I'll just make sure that this doesn't tip when I start hitting, because that's going to jump a bit on the floor. And what I'll do, since that tool is so great, I got a lot of surface to hit on this side. So we'll just put it like this. Make sure your rag is well is well wrapped around your hammer. You just see, simple as that, and the old thing turn. So just make sure you're as flat as possible because yes, there's a curve right there, but the force is actually following this line. So the force is applying in that direction. And this is just there to make sure there is a contact on this piece and making sure that the force is distributed as straight as possible on this axe. So this will make your life so much easier. If I remember a pry bar like this, this may be, I don't know, $15, $20. There is, of course, always some pry bars that cost like 100 bucks, and it's a pry bar. Who cares, right? Just, just get a cheap one. And, just make sure it got that, that little groove, that little angle. It's a straight one. Make sure it's kind of thick enough to get the hammer, uh, to hit it without breaking, and having a good surface to make the impact. And that will change your whole life when you're trying to remove lock rings. But like I'm telling you, this is kind of sharp. Oh, this is kind of sharp. And you will cut off a few tabs. So... I would suggest always try with a piece of wood. If you don't have those type of high ridge and it's really, really small, then try with the tool instead of the piece of wood. If the lock ring remover tool doesn't work, then you have no choice but to turn to something like this or another type of uh, metal bar to make a few hit. But the metal bar, uh, do I got an extension around here? Give me a second. So let's say you got an extension like this, or a longer one, and you're trying to, to make that impact. If you're in this angle, the whole thing's are just going to pop with each hit, hit you're going to make. At that angle, you're hitting, it's a bit thick, it's not going to be great, right? Even if you turn it around, it's great, but you got a really small surface contact right there, and you're going to hit your hand once in a while with the hammer. So, Instead of, like I'm saying, instead of using this, this will be, make a big difference. So, I hope that's going to help you out, guys. Uh, I hope I'm going to save somebody's hands and hoping somebody won't blow up. Because like I'm telling you, you got fumes of gas right there and I don't want anything to happen. And to the uh, person that sent me that, that little stand for my phone. Uh, to keep filming thank you very much that's actually really useful right now so big big thanks and i hope uh, to see you guys around on another video so i'm gonna post this video independently just for the lock ring and I've, i will post a video about me removing the old gas tank for a toyota corolla from the 2008 i think it's for uh 2002 up to 2008, I think, for those models. But anyways, that's something else. So anyways, all right. Cheers, guys.